The judge presiding over former President Trump's case is warning against any statements or social media posts that could incite supporters. Since news broke that Trump would be indicted, Trump has repeatedly posted on his social media site about the case, calling Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg a, quote, degenerate psychopath, asking his followers to protest and warning of potential death and destruction resulting from the charges against him. Prosecutors raised these comments to Judge Juan Mershon in a bid to get an order that would prevent Trump from posting documents from the case on social media. The judge did not rule on that request, but did advise Trump to refrain from making statements that are likely to incite violence or civil unrest and asked him to avoid rhetoric that could jeopardize the rule of law. Just hours after the presiding judge advised Trump to refrain from that rhetoric that could inflame or incite civil unrest, the former president went on an extended tirade while addressing his supporters at Mar-a-Lago. Trump attacked the judge, calling him a Trump-hating judge with a Trump-hating wife. He called District Attorney Alvin Bragg a criminal who should be prosecuted or at the very least resign. Trump also went after special counsel Jack Smith, calling him a lunatic and a bomb thrower who is threatening people every single day through his representatives and their threatening jail terms. And the former president called New York Attorney General Letitia James a racist in reverse. Lovely. And instead of responding to that, I just, George Conway, want to ask a little bit more about the point you were making. You were saying we don't know what bumps this up to a felony. I think, you know, from, from my perspective, we're looking at this as a potential crime that was committed. No matter what the crime, no matter how big, how serious the crime is, Trump has done a great job of desensitizing the public, telling people he would be arrested when he wasn't going to be arrested, drumming up 24-hour coverage so that by the time it happens, everyone's already heard everything. And we've been hearing about this case for years. Alvin Bragg said that there is more evidence. He didn't have to share exactly what that was. Um, but my, my question to you is, no one is saying Trump didn't do this. I mean, I don't even hear Trump saying that. Um, so again, the public politically desensitized to just how you know, unseemly it might be for a president to pay off a porn star in order to influence the election or keep his wife from finding out about it. Who knows what his intent was? But could there be a possibility of a secondary indictment? Or what are the potentials that could play out here if a crime indeed was committed? Well, I mean, he, he is very much capable of talking himself into more trouble. I mean, we've seen this from the very beginning of his presidential career when he basically took an investigation about whether or not the Russians tried to interfere with the 2016 election and made that investigation essentially all about him and his, and his desire and attempts to obstruct that investigation. I mean, remember there was a several hundred page report issued by special counsel Robert Mueller, and one half of it was devoted to Trump's efforts to derail the investigation. He is perfectly capable of committing crimes, uh, felonies, uh, to avoid um, nothing, which was probably what he had done before he started trying to obstruct the Mueller investigation. He certainly all, um, probably he's willing to try to commit uh, crimes to avoid being convicted of a misdemeanor. It's just that he's just he doesn't know when to stop. Yeah, and speaking of not knowing when to stop, John Heilman, I thought it was fascinating. Yesterday, every Democrat, and again, it will get mad at me. Uh, I'm, I'm good with it. Every Democrat I talk to, Every lawyer, every DA, I was making calls throughout the afternoon. They were all disappointed by, by Bragg's, uh, by, by, by the, the, the actual indictment itself. They were all disappointed by, by the charging papers and what we're saying. So, boy, this is it. Uh, so, you know, advantage Trump, disadvantage like DeSantis in the entire Republican field. If Donald Trump was sane, if he were rational, he would have said, I'm going to go to bed with the win. 
But as we all know, Donald Trump can't keep his mouth shut. He goes out, I will just say, he messes the bed in a stupendous way last night. He could have used that speech to say, yeah, you know what, they, they treated me bad, they, they did this, that, the other, just like what happens to you when they treat you bad, doing A, B, C, the system's rigged again. Instead, it was, it was, it was all these personal grievances. He went all over the place, scattershot, and by the end of, of, of the speech, Ron DeSantis had to be feeling great, going, well, he's always going to be him. Because by the end, you're like, yeah, that guy, that guy will never be president again. He took this advantage that a lot of people thought he had and completely blew it with that crazy display last night at Mar-a-Lago.